All right, folks, today I'm going to review this armor here, a brigandine. But first, a quick shout out to one of my viewers who sponsored the video, Matthew Moss, the author of After the Last Battle. That's a novel set in a post-apocalyptic world after Hell defeated Heaven in a war, and there are almost no angels left. And the main character's village is being raided by a group of demons who are looking for a, an angel in hiding, and after that, well, th that angel and the main character team up in a fight against uh, the demon regime. So I'll post the link down below, you can check that out. So that sounds pretty cool, and it'll release soon, you can pre-order it right now. It's very low price, only four bucks. So yeah, take a look. Okay, so let's get to the armor here. The brigandine was used between the 14th and 16th centuries. So what this is, you can see right here, there's a number of plates that are riveted to the, this layer of fabric. So um, they were either riveted to one layer of some kind of textile, or sometimes they were also sandwiched between two layers. And there are different patterns. You know, sometimes you have a very large number of really small plates, or that it could be larger. So this is a cheaper to make than plate armor and it doesn't have to be as precisely fitted as a plate harness. So this was used by, you know, just common soldiers, non-noble men-at-arms. So this type of armor could be worn on top of a gambeson or mail or both, you know, gambeson and mail on top and then the brigandine. I'm just gonna put this on. I'm going to put on this uh, stylish battered cap just because the plates on the inside of the brigandine really like to uh, eat up and tear out your hair. So, so it's pretty easy to put on. Just slip it over your head. So. It can snag a little bit as you put it on. So you can put this on by yourself, but it's quite a pain in the butt because I can barely really see where where the holes are, and it's it's generally best to open this up on one side quite a bit so it's easier to pull over your head. If you uh, just close it up fully on both sides, you can still try to slip into it, but it's a lot more difficult. So I'm just gonna get some help. Yeah, that would definitely be tricky for me to do. I would just have to go by feel. I can't really see any of that. So. Certainly easier if somebody else does it, even if it's possible to put it on by yourself. Are you calling me a knave? <laughs> no, this is a common soldier's armor. I'm not a noble. You're just a random dude. Like, we, we fix each other, I guess. Why am I helping you? I'm not because, even Because I'll, I'll help you then, afterwards. <laughs> you help me get in my armor, I help you get in yours. <sighs> Thanks, bro. And then, and then we get wenches. I can live with that one. <laughs> I might have done a corset thing on this. <laughs> I think that's fine. As long as it stays on. And now the part that you have more fun with, hit me. I don't have a lot of space to swim, so... Much easier this way. Harder. I felt that, but not too bad. Okay. It's okay, I'll survive. <laughs> Go ahead. That's too light. Yep, I can feel that. It's generally whenever it hits uh, around the solar plexus, that definitely kind of knocks the wind out of you. And it's, it's unpleasant, but you'll be fine. Um, hit me in the belly pretty hard because that shouldn't really be much of an issue. Yep. That is perfectly fine. There is, there's enough soft tissue and muscle and fat <laughs> to cushion that. So yeah, I mean, if you if you struck me like three hundred percent harder, it would I would feel that would hurt, but I don't think I would get through it at all. Um, what about what about this blunt mace? Yeah, that's okay. Harder. Dented. <laughs> Interesting. So you actually you actually dented them a little bit, huh? Doesn't actually bother me though. I, I don't even I don't feel any extra pressure. Can you even see that? So a little bit dented 
right here. So a mace will do that, but I don't care. So yeah, you would definitely deform these, but I think it's less of a problem than with a full plate because everything is more flexible to begin with. So you're not going to be left with, oh, I can't move anymore in this because it's, it's deformed. Yeah, thanks. Was it fun? A little bit disturbing, actually. <laughs> so if a strong, burly man-at-arms hit me as hard as he can with a sword, it would hurt, of course, and uh, maybe if it's around the collarbone, there could be some risk of, of breaking a bone. But it doesn't seem very likely with uh, the way that the plates hold up pretty well to the impact and, and distribute it. And then underneath I have the gambeson that also absorbs a lot of the force. So I, th I think broken bones would be very unlikely with a sword, unless it's a fairly heavy two-handed war sword, maybe something like that, or a falchion. Again, with a lot of force, perhaps, but far less likely than with a lot of other types of armor outside of plate. So this is basically the next best thing to plate. If you were wearing just mail, you would definitely get broken bones from a strong hit with a sword. With a mace or axe, like somebody who, who has a lot of strength and hits you very hard, this could still break bones underneath and it could definitely be bruising. And as said, it's very noticeable that if you get a hit right here where the solar plexus is, that can definitely knock the wind out of you and that might uh, affect you or stun you for a, for a moment at the very least. But then again, there's adrenaline in, in real combat. So yeah, this is excellent protection and uh, it's weight-wise not a problem at all. It's uh, almost exactly 10 kilograms, however many pounds that is, 22 or something probably. I'll, I'll put it right here. So this is fairly comfortable to wear. This would probably take a few hours before I really start to notice it for the shoulders to start aching and stuff like that. But right now it's pretty comfortable as far as weight is concerned. I, I say that because the problem is heat. Um, it gets pretty warm under under here. Fortunately, today has, it has finally cooled down outside. We had a heat wave here before. So I can survive this right now, but it's it's definitely uncomfortably warm. And uh, that's, that's always a problem, especially with a gambeson or any kind of padded undergarment, acaton, doublet, anything like that. It's going to be warm. There's, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, as far as mobility is concerned, with this particular one, with this reproduction, I have one issue. That is, I can't bring my arms very far together. I think for me the, the cutout here would need to be larger. There, There's not quite enough space. Normally this is cut out a bit more to give the arms space to move in. Like this, this feels restrictive. Even if I just hold a sword like this, I can feel this pinch quite a bit. This might even restrict the blood flow if I, if I stayed in this for too long. This is definitely um, restricting too much. So this needs to be shaped a bit differently to allow more space for the arms. That's, that's my major problem with this. Otherwise the fit is pretty good, but there's one weird thing about this, namely anytime you, you lean forward, this happens. It folds up like that, and I think that could be avoided. You can see in a lot of the depictions of this kind of armor, there's, there's a fairly pronounced waist, and then it flares at the bottom. I think that could prevent that. You can see that the fold on the coat of plates that the knight errant was showing in a video shifts up and down rather than bends and folds. All right, so about the quality of this particular reproduction here by Armstreet, it seems reasonably accurate. I don't know enough about this type of armor to really judge whether they got all the little details right, but you know when I when I compare it to the pictures, I found it seems pretty similar overall. An exception would be the lacing that's holding the front and back piece together at the shoulders. The examples I've seen were typically either connected with straps or stitched together. So that seems inaccurate and also less effective. Some of them were closed in the back, some in the front, and there are also a few examples of closure on the side. But the lacing I can't really find evidence for. And 
the strap and buckle would be much easier to put on. Also, it would be way easier if it was in the front. But I do have to point out that I'm not an armor expert and there was a lot of variation, so I can't say for sure if this was never done. There's a lot of work that goes into this, of course. And there's plenty of rivets, lots of, of separate plates. The fabric is also really nice. I like the color, it's kind of green. Looks really good. And this you know, armor in general, of course, is very expensive if it's well made. However, the price is pretty high. Now that in and of itself, I wouldn't necessarily mind so much because, you know, reproductions of historical arms and armor in general can get quite expensive if the quality is there. Now, I have to nitpick, well, it's more than nitpick, really. I have to complain a little bit about, for one, the fit isn't quite as good as it could be. Now, I gave them the measurements in this gambeson here, so it should fit quite well. But there, there is a bit of, quite a bit of extra space here. So you can maybe see that here. It's like I'm showing off cleavage or something. So it, it bunches up here. There, there's there's quite a bit of bit of extra space here in the center that affects how it sits, and uh, so the way it it, uh, it rolls up like this. I I don't know how easy that would be to avoid, but it's a bit of an, a nuisance. And the way it's closed up here with a string at the side is very simplistic. Overall, this is a very nice looking and well made armor. It's just very high priced, especially considering that the fit isn't as good as it could be for a custom tailored item. At the same time, I also understand it is difficult to get it just right when the, the wear isn't actually there. Like if, if you take the measurements yourself and, and give it give those to them, it always depends on you know how, how tightly do you measure and you know things can be a little bit off here and there and as said, it's hard to fit this perfectly to somebody who is not in their workshop. I totally understand that. But, you know, I have to point that out. You know, at this price range, stuff like that could be better. And also for the price, the pattern could be a bit more refined, in my opinion. You know, like on a lot of the originals where you see it, there's, there's more of a, a taper toward the waist and then it's it flares out more. Now, I don't have that much taper in the waist to begin with. I'm a little chubby, I, I'll get that, okay. Either way, it could probably be a somewhat more complex pattern. So, as far as I can tell with my you know, limited experience with armor reproductions, this seems like good quality. Um, I would definitely recommend it at a lower price. At the price that they're asking, I have some reservations about it, I have to say that. But, yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to try it out. Protection is definitely outstanding. I can say that, no doubt about it. If you wanted this for chemo practice, SCA, anything like that, any event or school that, that allows this kind of armor, then absolutely, this will do very well to protect you. So a big thank you to Arm Street for sending this to me. Highly appreciate it. And I hope you liked the review and found it helpful. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Today I'm going to review this, this skewed armor here. It shouldn't rotate as much. Uh, this is a great start. This is going to be fun. That's a novel that takes place in a post at <laughs> A post-apocalyptic world. This takes place in a post-apocalyptic world. That's a novel set in a post apoc This is really on my mind too much, isn't it? Ad-apocalyptic. Like, I know it's post-apocalyptic. It's the proper term. It's not a YouTube thing. You know, when, when the Earth is conquered by demons, that's a bit worse than... <laughs> Content creators getting demonetized, I realize that.